Well, hello, it's me, David Mason here, replying to your questions and to Mr Greenfield's part in the questions his students. This is for Lucy Bugdale, I'm reading off the list, Amelia Arves, Amy Bugdale, Emily Shanks and Hallie Galvin. And question one is, what inspired you to write a series of books? Well, the truth is that I didn't set out to write a series of books. I wrote the first one, and my son Rory, then nine years of age, loved it. Dad, Dad, can you write another one? I said to him, I'm really sorry, Rory, but I've kind of run out of ideas, you know. That's the end of the story. That's a good place to leave it. Well, it wasn't. Two years later, I suffered a terrible bout of flu. Mr Greenfield would have succumbed a lot earlier than myself, but I battled on in school nonetheless. But driving home, ill as can be, I found myself tucked up in bed for the next week. And there, being bored stiff, I thought, can I? Should I? Is it possible? And it was. I thought to myself, yeah, I've worked in a hospital before. Perhaps I could write part two of the book based around a hospital. And I knew everything about the basement of a hospital and... And there you go, there you've got it, part two. And I couldn't leave it alone. It was like an itch that you had to scratch. So along comes part three. I know quite a bit about the economy. I know quite a bit about bribery. Not that I'm involved in it. You'll have to ask Mr Greenfield about that and his criminal record, although he doesn't really like to talk about it too much. Anyway. Yes, I know quite a bit of bribery. It's very evident on the island of Mallorca, on which the books are based. In fact, King Carlos of Spain recently deposed, or he gave up the job and gave it to his son. His granddaughter was on trial in Mallorca for corruption and bribery. Hmm, you could see it coming. Anyway, that's the end of question one. Now... Quick slurp of tea, Roy Bosch with Earl Grey, and on to question two. Why is there so much speech in the first few pages of your books? Well, why not? I don't really know the answer to this question, but I guess it's because I really wanted the characters to have depth. There's two ways you can do it, describing the characters, their movements, leaving it to the reader. But I much prefer the way that they talk, what they say, little hints in their speech that give the game away about their character. And I like the humour too. I like to have a lot of humour. And you can really only do that with speech, can't you? Ask Mr Greenfield. He's very humorous with his speech. Question three. Why is your series of books mainly themed on ghosts? Well, I suppose it's the thing of the sea that fascinates you. Is there anything living out there? The mysteries of the sea, shipwrecks, that gave ideas about the fishermen, which was connected with... And it would be nice, wouldn't it, if some people could come back to life, even just for a while, and even in a shape or form that wasn't very useful to themselves. And then my kids say, well, everybody likes ghosts. People love a good ghost story. You should see the number of ghost books that we have. So, ghosts it is. There you have it. Do I believe in reincarnation, says question four. Well, I really don't know about this. I don't know. Have I been something else in my life? Was Mr Greenfield something useful in a previous life? I'm not entirely sure. I'll leave that one. I'll have to sit on the fence if there were a fence to sit on. I'm not entirely sure if I believe in reincarnation. But I do believe in things spiritual. So I do believe that there's a real spiritual element to learning. It's not just about facts and figures. It's about how you feel on the day, how inspired you can be, all that kind of thing. Question six. I'm leaving question five, which is why do you write about ghosts? Because I think I've answered it. 
Question six, why does it fascinate you so much? I'm not sure what it is. Is it football, hockey, golf, cricket or anything else? I suppose it might refer to the ghosts. Why does it fascinate you so much? Well, I think I've already answered that. It fascinates me that people may be on the brink between life and death. It fascinated the ancient Greeks and Latin people who used to dream about the river Styx and how you had to cross over it to go from life to death. It fascinates the Catholic faith now. Right. Number seven, where do you get your ideas from? Well, I have to say that this book was written, that was me with an itchy nose, by the way, was written in Mallorca, and I've been visiting there every winter since 1996. That's a long time. And I love the island, and I love the light, and I love the colour of the soil, and I love walking in the forests and swimming in the sea. And when you're doing all of that, that kind of inspires you anyway, physiologically. And the whole geograph geography of the place. Well, I looked into the sea and that wasn't all. I've missed a bit out. You see, when I went there when the kids were early, uh, in their early youth, six, seven, Leo and Abby, they would always pest you. If you're going to drag them out on a walk, like adults like dragging kids along on walks, if you were going to do that, then you had to tell them a story to amuse them on the way. And this is where the first story, Midnight Mystery, actually came from. Although the story I told was only 20 minutes long, and it was very different. But it did involve the basement of a hotel and lots of trapped people. So, telling stories, short stories to begin with, can broaden out into writing a novel or even a trilogy of books. Imagine that. Maybe you should have a go with Mr Greenfield at telling simple stories. Very, very simple stories. Have a go before you leave school. Question eight. Do you use your children's names for names in your books? Yes, in this trilogy I do. There are some poems that mention my children's name. Lily in particular. Rosa has one after her. Rory has one after him. Poppy. I think I've given it up. Oh, Alan's nodding. Yes. No, that isn't the artist one that's about Lily. So Poppy doesn't have one. Um, but I like to think that Rory and Rosa are happy and Lily with having poems named after them. How much do you base Question 10, your children, on in your books? Well, those characters of Leo and Abby are quite close to the real characters themselves. Leo is, as portrayed in the books, he's a bit of a fall guy for his older sister and he was very comical in being put up to do things by his older sister who was a bit sneaky and a bit too smart for Leo. And yes, Leo did have a penchant for eating huge amounts of spaghetti bolognese. That was lifted straight from his character. And they're old now. Oh my goodness me, they've got walking sticks now. Abby's 23 now and Leo's 22. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoy reading the books and pass them and recommend them on to others, will you please, so that people in Walsh School can read them ad infinitum. And my wife keeps whispering something to me that's putting me off. What would you like me to say, darling? You can review them on Amazon. Helen's always after this because if we get lots of reviews, if we get lots of reviews, then people will buy them and I'll become a multi-millionaire and I might just slip Mr Greenfield a tenner. So on that happy note, bye-bye to all of you. Sorry it was late, but this was due to domestic problems with my dad who you'll be now pleased to know. I visited him today and things are looking up a little bit. So lots of love to all of you. Enjoy secondary school. Happy holidays, especially to Mr Greenfield. Bye bye.